Hello everybody, Stuart from Riku here, and today I want to showcase Muse API, which is a new large language model becoming commercially available, which is created by a company out of Europe called Lighton. Um, the advantages of Muse over other large language models is that it has native training in different languages other than English. So you can use this Muse API in French, English, German, Italian, and Spanish. And I believe that an Arabic version is also coming very soon. And one of the uh, one of the sort of core elements that I get from when I talk with the guys at Lighton is that they have quite a emphasis on providing these language models in native languages for as many people as possible. So I believe that they are going to be adding more languages um, to their offering in the future, which makes this very exciting. Now, the Muse API is not publicly available just yet, but I believe that it's going to be coming out on the 11th of April, which is very, very soon. So I just thought that I'd give a brief sort of overview and a demonstration of what I found with playing with it myself. And it's something that we are going to be implementing within Riku. So you can sort of play and build out your own prompts using Muse API and test it against the other large language models that we also have available. So we are on the Muse website at the moment, and they have a very basic sort of playground where you can just sort of uh, generate some some outputs. And we'll just do that for, for the sake of uh, the initial sort of uh, showcase. So we have a sentiment uh, classifier here in English. It says, to be honest, Squid Game wasn't worth my time. So we're expecting this sentiment to be negative, and it comes up as negative. We come in to the German, it says something. Luckily, I have Google Translate here. So who was Conrad Adenauer? Um, and we can hit generate and it will say who this guy is. Um, it's the first chancellor of Germany. He was born on 1876 in Cologne. His father was, okay. So it's uh, hit the token limit there, but it's just sort of showcasing how this uh, works. Again, we have a sentiment classifier in Italian here. Um, I can't read Italian, but I imagine this terrible is terrible. So I'm expecting this to be negativo. And we have negativo. And if we just uh, shuffle this to get different stuff from Italian, it looks like this is question and answering. So we have Chi combativa now Colosseo, and I am British, so I'm probably <laughs> uh, butchering all of these pronunciations. Who is fighting in the Colosseum? So we have the context at the top with the information, and I imagine that it's drawing on this with the output. So if we hit create here, we are going to get the answer of Solidati Romani, which is just going to be the Roman soldiers. Okay, great. So that is the German, the Italian, the Spanish. We can go through. Um, it has some stuff on Picasso and it has given some cubismo answer here. Uh, life. So it's saying what are the keywords of the text and it's pulled out cubismo, cubism um, from this text. So this is uh, fairly interesting. And I think it's fair to say that the Muse API works, the, the strongest language model that they have available is French. So if you are French and you're looking to create uh, content with AI, then you're probably going to have a great, uh, great time using Muse. Um, the German, the Spanish and the Italian, they're, they're fairly strong, but I think the, the French model is, is, a, is a level up in terms of parameters and training data. So it's uh, it's going to work to a higher level. Um, so here we just have listing stuff for a recipe, I guess, ingredients for a recipe, and it tells you what you want to list. So this is the basics of, of Muse, um, and it's, uh, it's pretty powerful, and I've been fortunate to have uh, API access for a little while, and I've been playing around with it myself. Um, 
some of the things that I like with it is we have been able to, you, you're able to play with word biases, right? So I am in Postman now, and I'm just going to go through a few different demonstrations that I've done. I've copied a product description generator that I've been using elsewhere to create product descriptions uh, for e-commerce products. And we have uh, we have a uh, whiskey uh, whiskey product setup. So you'll see we have Parismo whiskey as a product name, and we have product details, just giving details of this whiskey. And you'll notice here, we can choose the output tokens, which we've done 400 is more than plenty. We put the stop words where we want it to stop generating content. We can set the temperature, you know, it's all the standard stuff. We have frequency penalty, presence penalty, if we want to set that. And we have this biases here. And the biases here is really nice. And it's really quite important. Um, what the biases allows you to do is you can choose to uh, bias certain words. So if I want a word not to appear, I can set this at minus 100. And this word will never appear in the output. And this uh also works for words that we want to appear so it goes from minus 100 to 100 in scale but i think uh i think the the, the guys at uh light on and muse api are, are looking to maybe toggle that down a bit because from from what i found playing with it you only really need to set this to three four maybe five maximum and anything much higher than that becomes uh becomes a way to just to get a lot of repetition but if you're creating SEO content or content with which requires certain keywords within it, then being able to bias words like this and actually combining a word bias with a frequency penalty and the presence penalty gets you something incredibly powerful. Um, and we'll just sort of do a few generations just to see how we go. So we're looking for it to include the word aged and we're looking for it to include the word smooth and we don't want it to include the word cheap. So what we can do is we can hit send and we're going to send the request to the API endpoint and we're going to see what we get back. So you'll see we have take a drink to the next level with Parisma whiskey. This refined whiskey is made of the finest ingredients. You, you can relax knowing you, you enjoy a quality product. You'll see we have smooth appearing here in the output. We had biased it to appear. Um, and have we got aged anywhere or have we not? We do not and in this one, um, but we can generate again and see if we can do that. Or what we could do is we could just toggle the setting. So we could put four here and you know, a lot of these uh, APIs and these large language models is all about experimenting and seeing what works best. And I think that you can even get a better output by including some uh, presence penalty, frequency penalty to bump up what we want to appear. So, Make every day a Parisma day with Parisma whiskey. We have aged appearing twice in here now. So that's very cool. Do we have smooth in here at all? Uh, let me just see. So there is no smooth in here. So let's just see what happens if we put four and four for both of these. But you can see the API endpoint and this Muse API is fairly competent at being able to create a decent product description um, with the uh, with the prompt that we've used for other technologies. So this is a prompt that we've used for OpenAI, for GPTJ, for AI21, and it works fairly well. And even here, you're getting uh, the same sort of stuff. What you'll notice is now that we set the biases a little bit high, we're getting a lot of repetition. So it's just repeating the same lines over and over. So this is this is something that you know we're we're looking at and uh, trying to actually determine what the best uh, the best settings are. But there are ways that you can combine these word biases with frequency penalties, presence penalties, to get some really sort of outstanding outputs, which is uh, super exciting to play with and enjoy so you'll see this one here we have aged we have aged here it's appearing four times within this do we have smooth we have smooth and we have smooth appearing three times so it's definitely a great idea and it's definitely something that is super awesome 
as far as I'm aware, there is no one else really doing word biases in this way. So to make it as easy as possible for people to be able to play and have words appear relatively frequently based on these settings is a massive breakthrough and it's going to make such a difference for keywords and SEO type topics. So this is truly awesome and I'm excited to play with it even more and see what is possible. But you can see uh, from a lot of these outputs, it's providing content that you could use and it's good quality. The large language model is working well. So I'm very happy with this and I'm definitely going to add it to my personal AI stack when I create stuff because it's performing on par with a lot of the other models. Um, and this word bias is, is super important. So uh, it's it's nice to play with. So that is playing with the English version and the API. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at a art title French model. So we have generate. So what we're gonna do is I will just take this prompt and I will load up a, a text editor, just paste that in. Just get rid of these line breaks to show you what this prompt looks like. Copy that, push this down. We go into here and we have, so what we're looking at is we're generating a title corresponding to the described painting. And the last description is a few boats are floating on the water with on the horizon, the blood background and a large red sun illuminating the water. So if we were to hit generate from this prompt, we can see what we get and we're getting like Soleil Rouge, which uh, even I can translate with my very limited French skills, which is Red Sun. So it's giving the title of uh, this painting. So we've got the Red Sun um, and it's the sun. So it's, it's providing title, uh, title suggestions based on the description of a painting um, using a French model. And obviously we have the end tokens set very low because we only want a little bit to come out of this. So this works very well, um, very simple, very easy to use. Um, and if you are natively French, then you're gonna have a good time actually using a model like this. So now we have an example of a cooking recipe. So if I copy the prompt again, open up my text editor just to get the line breaks taken out for you, which makes it easier for us to do the translation. We can then shrink this, um, shrink this, and we're back in here. And we're saying, I have the following ingredients, chicken fillets, cream, butter, one red pepper. I want to cook them. Here is the preparation. And we have one. So we're doing the instructions for a recipe and we can set the token output to 50, temperature 0.6, and we're doing this in, in the French model, of course. And we're getting the output, which is here. Because we've set it to 50, um, it's probably not going to be as long as we need it. So let's just bump it up a little bit just to, just to see if we can get like a more complete style output from that. Okay, that's, that's a bit longer. So we can then take this. We're going to get it into the format that we want. Then we can copy this. We can go to our uh, translate. So you peel the peppers, cut them into small dice, cut the chicken into small pieces, brown it in a pan with a little oil. I dribble the sauce, put everything in a baking dish, put the dish in the oven for 20 minutes. So it's, you know, it's it's following on. It's telling you how to prepare the uh, the vegetables, the, the items that you have available to, to make a meal. So this is uh, quite fun and it's quite uh, quite good to you know just play with and figure out how you can use uh, such models to create various things, create prompts for various needs. Um, so that is pretty much demonstrating demonstrating the uh, the French. And now what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate something else that the uh, the Lighton models have and. The, the, the Muse API, they have something, they have the raw sort of models where you can do the text generation, you can build up the prompts, but they also have skills. They have skills for summarization and for this multitask. And the multitask is, it's really like an instruct style model. So you, you can tell it what you want it to do and it will do that. So I'm 
very interested in playing with this more myself in the future. But for now, let's just uh, see what we set. So this is using the English model again. And we have the text saying, create a sad poetry about love. We're using this skill, which is a multitask, and we have our settings to 64 character output. We can hit send to create some output text. Beware of Weeping Willow, for even while it does not die, it will hide the heart of the man that gave it for a while to his mistress. So <laughs> that's a, it's a pretty sad, somber poem about love. And you could do this for, I, I don't know, let's, let's, let's have a play. So those sad lips are sweet breath check. Those are the alluring lips that they tried to understand, suppress their heartbeats. Yeah, so it's a sad poem. So let's just try and create something like a, create a short sci-fi story about, about a man living a lonesome life on the moon. Um, and then let's just bump this token up to 300 and just see what we can get out. Okay, so we've got the story. Uh, about the man living the lonesome life on the moon. So, the man woke up from a restless sleep and looked at the dark window of his cabin. It was dark, only a couple of green lanterns hanging on the wall. Other man sleeping next to him, his huge wide face on the pillow with a tan blue, blah, 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 button. I was up to. Okay, so it's written a story, but it hasn't really got the context of the person living on the moon. So, that's a little bit of a shame, but it's, you know, we haven't really enforced anything with this prompt or anything like that. So uh, this one is a bit of a better output. In space, no one can hear you scream and you can live in a lonesome life on the moon. There are wild beasts and snakes, but that's what you get for living out on the rock. You have more than enough room to swing a wicked good axe at the cosmos. But I wonder why do people live out there? Because the moon is closer, blah, 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 blah. So it's, it's taking... Uh, the context and it's creating some stuff and like we always say hit generate multiple times to see what the outputs are like until you can get something which is really refined for you, what you need um a lot of the prompts that we're demonstrating today with this uh this new api is we're not even providing uh examples within the prompt so there's not really much prompt engineering it's really just letting it right as we go and to finish off this uh demonstration of what is here we're going to showcase uh, an Italian demo now. And this was somebody who had provided this information within our group. So shout out to the uh, Riku users and our Facebook group where we share and sort of share tips and everything about uh, AI and building with AI. So we can take this, just take out the line break. And I think what we are actually generating is we are wanting detailed introduction on how to create an emailed list, uh, an email list, and we have detailed introduction. So then, if we hit generate on this, and we set the temperature quite high um, just to see really what happens here, um, and we can take the output. And again, I am going to get rid of any uh, line breaks from the JSON output, and I will then be able to copy this into here. So maintaining an email list helps maintain an effective email system. Reports that you might be next to start building, so those of you age, blah, 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 can help cheat track from multiple in a mail list, your emails might be interesting. So it's uh, provided a bunch of text. As far as the quality goes, I am not Italian, so I can't give you an exact sort of uh, output. But again, this is a model that we're doing without any examples within the prompt. I think if you were to provide a few one to two or even three examples of the type of output that you're expecting, um, then the model would be able to learn from that and give you more detailed outputs in the style of the examples that are provided. So that is definitely worth uh, bearing in mind, but it's a way for, you know, if you are Italian, you can now use a language model in your native language. Um, and again, German, we have a prompt from another member of the community. And if we were to copy this and again, just get the translation so we can see what we are doing. This program generates an introductory paragraph to a blog post with a blog title. Is it possible to exercise with an artificial joint? And we are wanting the 
introduction to be written. So again, we've just set the tokens to a random number and we set the temperature quite high um, just to see what comes out. And we can copy this output, although it looks like it's taken some uh, author's uh, work. So let's just see. We might have to do another generation in a second so we can get the text like we need it. The article, there are hundreds. Uh, okay, so that was a bad output, really. Let's uh, try and do another one to see what we get. And similarly to the last prompt, the more um, examples that you provide within the uh, within the prompt, the more you are likely to get a uh, a better output with 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 models like this because um, you can teach it exactly how you want it to sort of work and behave. So let's see how this one looks. Different joints can combine to form one joint depending on how many ligaments. Okay, so again, we're getting mixed results here. I think by providing more examples, you're going to get better results. But if you were to hit generate a few times, um, you might get something that you can use. Um, this one looks quite nice um why well, i'm saying that without being able to understand german but let's just copy this one and, and check for another example so we can get this and we can see how and why am i able is the history uh, okay so this this is a better output than the other ones before but by providing a few examples in the prompt then it's uh going to give you a uh, better output than anything else so that's pretty much an overview of uh, this Muse API. Where does this leave uh, Muse API and when are we going to integrate it within Riku? As far as I am aware, this API will become publicly available on the 11th of April. We plan to have it on Riku on the 11th of April. So you will be able to play with it and really understand some of the settings and get it working for your AI needs and experiment and see how it compares to other uh, other large language models available within Riku. I think it's a really good approach to one, be able to include word biases. So you can include keywords and words to avoid within the output. That's really clever. It's still sort of quite early days. And I think some of the settings need to be tweaked a little bit because you know we're seeing results having a number at like three or four when it goes up to a hundred. And if you set it at like 10, you're going to get just re repeated keywords over and over. So it, it's a good approach and definitely something that I think will improve dramatically in the future. Um, and I think being able to use a lot of these models in uh, different languages is definitely a right approach to take. Uh, from what I can tell with Muse API and playing around with it, the English and the French models are a level above what is possible in Spanish, Italian, and German. But, you know, that doesn't mean that the Spanish, German, and Italian models are rubbish. It just means that you probably need to be a bit more clever about your prompt engineering and providing a few more examples within your uh, prompts to get the output that you want. So, for example... The one that we were doing with the German introduction, if we were to provide the title and then an introduction, title introduction, title introduction, maybe two or three times with the examples, then the large language model would be able to see that pattern. It would be able to follow that pattern and it would give you a more relevant output. My my uh, playing around with it is limited, unfortunately, because I'm just a dumb English guy who doesn't speak any of these other languages. So I was just taking, you know, suggestions on from the community and suggestions from Muse API for from how I could sort of demonstrate with uh, these these outputs. But uh, it should be fun, and I'm excited to play with it a bit more. Um, I've spoken with the guys at Lighton um, over the past sort of month and a bit and and i'm very excited with the direction that they're heading it looks like it's going to be uh, another sort of advancement in the ai space and the more large language models that become available the better for everyone because everyone is learning from the process of building and, and putting out these models and it just advances the whole space further from what i can tell with the uh, the pricing situation and how this is going to look 
there is going to be a very generous uh, free plan for experimentation and sort of testing. Um, and then the plans sort of go up in, in price with the more characters you use. You know, the free plan is looking like it's going to be something which is more than enough for playing, experimenting and enjoying initially. And then obviously, if you wanted to create a product around this uh, Muse API or incorporate it into a larger application, then you'd probably you know move upwards of the plans into into a more paid plan um yeah super excited 11th of april we will have this live on riku so stay tuned and i hope that you are excited to play with it especially if you are french spanish italian or german it's it's something new to be able to actually train and, and build these and build out prompts within your native language without going for a translation service like deeple or google translate so super exciting times if you are interested in playing around with the largest amount of large language models in a single place online, we have all of the best quality models, then please go to ricky.ai today. We'd love to have you on board and we will also be you know, more than helpful to help you out with your prompts and whatever you need. We've got a thriving community on Facebook, which I'll put the link for down below, um, which you're more than welcome to join. Uh, I hope this video has been useful. Thank you.